What's up guys, Chad with Character Club. If you saw my first van build video, uh, you might have caught that I put a light bar in this, in this area of the bumper. This is a Ford E350 van, and it's a perfect spot for a light bar. Big shout out to Oxbeam. They sent me a really awesome light bar to test out, and I'm actually gonna fit that into the bumper. This is gonna be a quick video on how to do it, or at least how I do it. I do stuff on the cheap or I do stuff with stuff laying around. Not to say that it is cheap, but I like to figure out ways to do stuff. So I'm gonna show you in this video the brackets, how to make the brackets, and then how to wire it up to come on with the actual high beams of the, the vehicle. All right, so let's get to it. This light bar is the 5D Pro Series, and I think it's around a 20 inch or 22 inch light bar. I'll confirm that later on, doesn't really matter. It's about that, around that size. And in the box, it comes with uh, a wiring harness, a relay, an on off switch. So, you know, you'd mount this in the cab, you connect these two wires to your battery. It's already got the relay connected. So then you just connect that to this, you know, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Uh, you can have a light bar in your vehicle pretty quickly, but of course me being me. I don't I don't use that I actually will kind of reuse some of this because I want the light to come on with the high beam So I don't have to drill a hole. I don't have to run wire through the firewall and I'm gonna show how I do that in a second and then also I want it to fit that spot right here, right? So what I do is I put the I put the light in here and I figured out uh, approximately how high I need to make a bracket. So then I just grabbed a piece of scrap aluminum. So this is one inch by one eighth aluminum. And I bent this, this portion two inches and then I cut it at four and three quarter height. And my, my height mark is four and one eighth. So then I drilled a hole and I just put it loosely together now. So when I put it in the actual slot, it will line up and be the perfect height. So now, now I'm gonna drill the holes for the mounting points and get this mounted. Then once it's mounted, then I'm going to run the wires and show you how I do that. I just finished drilling the holes for the mounts and I'm just doing a test fit right now so you can kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like. So if you come down like that, it's pretty good. I, now what I'm going to do is I need to drill holes uh, through the bumper there and there. And then I'm going to fish some bolts up through that, bolt that baby down, and then just start the wiring process. Okay, so you can see the bracket. I just finished bolting them in, so I used quarter 20 uh, bolts with uh, the locking nylon uh, nuts on the bottom part so that you can see that this is nice and secure I uh, use lock lock washers here so these bolts won't back out and then there's little grooves on the side here to prevent this from from ever turning so if you want to actually adjust the angle of this you can you just have to loosen up these nuts here uh, the bolts there now that that's done, what I need to do is remove this plastic cowling piece here because I want to be able to get access to the wire. I'm going to run the wire up to here and then also I have to take the headlight out and figure out which one is the high beam. So we're going to do that right now. Just got the headlight out uh, for reference point. Uh, this is a newer model E350 and it has three bolts holding it down. The top one is an eight millimeter and then there's two on the bottom, which are seven millimeter. Uh, so you're gonna want a, what I ended up using, the socket extension, and then I had you know the, the socket on each end. So now what I need to figure out is which one's the high beam, which one's the low beam. And then what I'll do is I'll figure out which cable's coming in from there and use that as a reference. 
using a multimeter, I was able to determine that this bluish, bluish one here is the ground and the yellow one is the high beam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these, I'm going to end up cutting these and splicing them with waterproof uh, marine grade butt splice connectors so they'll still be waterproof once it's done. And this is going to replace the whole switch method. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So over here, apologize for the mess, let's move this away. If we look at this, here's your switch. And the way the switch works is it has constant power coming in from the battery, which is the white. Then when you activate the switch, which is blue, it sends, it comes down here to the relay, activates the relay, and then it's going to connect the actual light power with the battery power. So I'm going to reuse this, and the only thing I'm going to have to do, the white, it won't be relevant for this case, so I'm going to cut that and then put a, a heat shrink over that. I will connect the blue and the black wire. The, the black wire will get connected to blue here, and then the blue wire over there will go to my, um, the power lead for the high beam. So the switch will go away, get rid of that. I'm gonna cut these and get this cleaned up and ready for install. Just finished up splicing the wires. So I used, again, I used the, the marine grade heat shrink uh, butt splice connectors, it, which has a glue inside of it. And then on top of that, I also used heat shrink tubing that has glue inside of that. So it's double, double glued. So there won't be any water getting in the connection here. So definitely solid there. I'm going to put wire loom on this piece, this section here to cover this whole piece. And then just give you an idea, the relay is mounted here. I have the, the connection going down. You can see that the marine butt splice connector right there. So that's all sealed up. And then I'm just going to end up zip tying this so it doesn't rattle around. This is already bolted. And then I just did a test, everything works. And then I'm going to attach these factory. This is what came with the aux beam light here's the fuse relay reconnect the headlight and job done final look everything is connected tested and ready to go so just to give you a rundown we have the the ground coming over here this is the inline fuse positive here comes to the relay and then the relay goes the blue wire goes down and it gets triggered from the hit the high beam in the headlight and then power is fed through the relay down here. You can see the wire going down. I put a little zip tie there and then it comes down to the light. Pretty simple, cleaned up the wire. It's got, got rid of a lot of excess wire. I don't like, then the plastic piece goes on top so you won't even see the relay. You'll have to take the plastic piece out uh, to get to the relay if it ever needs to get replaced. But you know, everything's accessible and uh, should be pretty much foolproof. So next up, gonna give you a demo and then we'll close this baby out. And I gotta say, just from first glance, really good looking light. I can see there's a there's the wide beam here and this is more of a spot in the middle. So this should throw really good. I'm excited to see how it looks when the sun goes fully down here. Uh, so we'll take it for a ride in a little bit. All right, so here's a quick look of the high beams. <laughs> it's pretty wild. I'm gonna take a right here. The sun is not completely down, it's not completely dark, but just trying to get an idea of the lights. It's got that, I think I have to adjust them up a hair because of that thing in the middle. So I will do that later. Yeah, I think that, that spotlight in the center needs to be up a hair. But 
that is bright. Wow. Let's see. Yeah, that is crazy. Yeah, it definitely needs to angle up. I hate that, but overall pretty happy with that. Okay, so just adjusted the angle of the light bar and oh my gosh, it is absolutely wild. I mean, obviously there's a lot of backlight because of the tree, um, but let's, let's do a little bit of a drive and show you what it looks like without that tree. So no tree and <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Big shout out to Oxbeam. Thank you so much for sending this over. I gotta say, this is a huge win. Um, I mean, it is absolutely bright. You don't need a big light bar on the roof of your car. You can get away with a small one on the bottom. You know, like I said, this is about a 20 inch, 22 inch light bar or so. And uh, overall, absolutely epic. So yeah, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching this short clip on this. I wanted to, you know, do a big shout out to Oxbeam for sending that light over uh, for this build, particularly, you know, very happy with it. You know, I have never tried that, that style light. So I'll put a link in the description below. You know, I may get a little, little slice of the pie if you, uh, if you end up buying through that link. I'm not concerned about that. I just, you know, I, I wanna provide good content, honest content about products, products that work, you know, their pluses, their minuses. And I gotta say that, you know, <laughs> that, that light, wow. That, I mean, that thing is pretty, pretty dang bright uh, for what it is. And, you know, now that I have it adjusted correctly, I'm super happy with it. So anyway, I hope you like this video. If you can, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notifica notification button, whatever it is, you know, I'm just trying to grow this channel out and I appreciate, you know, you guys watching, you know, firing some comments below, some questions, whatever you have. If you have the light, let me know. If you're thinking about it, also let me know. And have a great night and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys.